All right, guys, we're gonna do another one of these chats. And today I get to uh, talk with Jason Vincent. Jason, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Super good, super good. Hey guys, I know you've absolutely seen Jason's work. He, uh, some of his photos in our community are some of the most liked photos and commented photos. Uh, your work is absolutely incredible, Jason. So I'm so stoked to be able to talk to you here today. Thank you, thank you. And uh, guys, the one thing I will tell you is if you haven't watched one of these live chats, definitely make sure you tune in for this one. Uh, I got a I got a preview to see some of the images that we're going to talk about, and I think what I love most about your work, Jason, is that you're so creative and just like I mean, you 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 try different new things all the time. You're you you know you're putting lights up to you know I, I, you, you, the way you use the modifiers and the way you just try different things just blows my mind. So I'm really stoked for people to be able to see this conversation. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, Jason, can you tell everyone where they can find more about your work, your, like your website, Instagram, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um... Vincentimages.com, so V-I-N-S-O-N images.com. Um, and then you can find me at uh, Vincent Images underscore Jason on Instagram. Perfect. And now is it is it you and your wife working together or are you mainly doing? Yeah, nope. So me and my wife are uh, both partners in this. And so we basically everything that we shoot, we shoot together. And That's you can, so you awesome. can find her at, so she's at Vincent Images on Instagram and I'm at Vincent Images underscore Jason. So she's the the original Vincent Images. <laughs> so it's a competition then. <laughs> so who has more Instagram likes? Uh, or followers, I guess. <laughs> I think I do, but I think she's a little bit better. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, good deal. Well, well, thank you again for being here. And, and like I said, for those who are watching, you guys are for a treat. You guys, if you have any questions, uh, we'll be there in the comments responding and helping out. So uh, by all means, feel free to, uh, to ask any of those questions that come to mind. Um, and guys, also, we're going to be trying to get these on a more consistent schedule so that when we're doing these live chats, you guys will know like every Wednesday at a particular time we're going to be doing them. So if you guys have any you know, opinion as to when would be a good date or time, by all means, feel free to let us know and we'll try to uh, accommodate as much as we can. But with that, Jason, let's jump right into this. I think one of the images that I, I really wanted to talk about first, and it's one that, that a lot of people have seen in the community, and I've even seen some people kind of um, be inspired by it and do their own version of it. And it's the one where you have a couple and they're spraying themselves or spraying champagne at each other. Um, can we can we talk about that image first? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Let me I'll pull it up here. Awesome. All right, you seeing it? That's yeah, that's the one. I love that shot. Tell us about that. Um, so this was at the very end of an engagement shoot, and actually it was funny because we we're wrapping up and we we're almost done. And uh, the couple was like, oh yeah, we got these four bottles of champagne and we think it'd be cool to do this spraying champagne shot. So I was like, sure, okay, that sounds like an awesome idea. So I set up my two lights. And so I have a behind the scenes picture here. Um, so it's just two hot shoe flashes on these uh, Manfrotto nano stands. And then they have the mag mod um, mag spheres on both sides. And they're placed just a little bit back behind the couple so I can get kind of that side lighting for them. Yeah. And it was funny, the first time that we did it, they didn't know how to spray the champagne. And so we got this like, it, <laughs> we didn't get a spray. They just it all just kind of flooded out, which worked out because they had four bottles of champagne. And it also worked out because I realized I was a little bit too close looking up. So I was able to scoop back a little bit and get a little higher. And that's how we ended up with this and taught them how to spray the champagne by putting your thumb over the top of the bottle. Nice. Nice. I love it. No, that's funny. And, and you're right. It, it, it lucked out that they had the four bottles, um, yeah. that they were able to do that. And, and that, that gave you an opportunity to kind of adjust your lights and stuff as well. Did you, did you adjust your position or cause like, for example, can we see that behind the scenes shot again? Yeah. So in, this, <laughs> in this behind the scenes shot, it looks like the flash that's illuminating her face is over to the right. And it's almost kind of like a short lit. Uh, set up like it's coming kind of almost from behind her a little bit is that is this do you think this was the original um the the mess up one or the the lighting for the the uh the great shot as well this is the lighting for the good one awesome and so it might it might just be that she had turned her head a little bit more so her head is just turned a little bit more and so you can kind of see where it falls off right here so she's just turned a little bit more towards that light whereas exactly. here she's a little bit but yeah that's awesome. What a what a great shot. And I and I love it. So this behind the scenes, it's it's really excellent for people to see. I think the biggest thing to, to mention for those who are watching this and have, have never done anything like this is you got to make sure those flashes are just 
you know, just a little bit high enough so that they can actually get to the, you know, across the way to the person. And what's great about it is you basically get a rim light on your subject. So if we go back to the original shot, you get a rim light on her, but then you also get the light on his face. You know what I mean? So you have it almost, you got these lights from all different directions, but really it's just done with two lights. Phenomenal shot, man. I love it. I will definitely put that one in my uh, quiver and use it on uh, one of my sessions in the future. <laughs> yeah. And another cool thing about it is just, I mean, we're in the middle of a parking lot. Like this is a main highway road here in Arkansas. And so there's nothing special about location. You just have to get low enough so they can get all of that distraction out of it. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. What, uh, you don't happen to remember any of your settings on that shot. Do you like what, uh, uh, you know, aperture or anything you shot of that? Um, F 1.4, 1 60th of a second ISO 100. Nice. Um, I'm on a 35, 35 millimeter lens. The Sigma art is what I use. My favorites. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Very cool. Well, Jason, um, like I said, you have so many good shots, so I'm going to let you lead the way and, and maybe you can tell us about more of these, uh, these images. I know a lot of you guys are going to recognize some of these images. And like I said, you're in for a treat because Jason's going to tell us a little bit more about how he created them. And I know just in our little preview there, our, our preliminary conversation that we were having, uh, I learned so much. And so I can't wait for people to hear this stuff. Awesome. Um, well, this is actually one of the very first weddings that I ever shot with MagMod. So I got just the basic kit with the grids and the gels. And I can't remember where I got the idea from uh, for this. I think, I want to say maybe Ryan Brenizer did something with some flash, but it's a lot of people do it where they, they flash behind them and they kind of create this silhouette. And so I thought it'd be cool to use the orange CTO gels and create kind of this silhouette inside of um, these arches here. And it ended up working out for the better that I didn't get a silhouette because it ends up the light ends up reflecting off of the wall that's me and kind of filling them in, which I thought yeah. was really cool. <clears throat> and then I ended up doing a similar shot with just one one light and then kissing a little bit farther back. Um, another cool thing to note here too is that this is actually taken at I think it's like 4:30 in the afternoon, and so being able to underexpose the ambient makes it look a lot more like sunset because we were able to get the sky a lot darker and then i just yeah. brushed in a little bit more i just brushed in some white balance changes down here to make it look like sunset wow that that's mind-blowing right there dude like seriously like what a great way of being able to say you know for example if the couple knows that they have to be in you know for the first dance or whatever in the in the dj and everyone's saying hey we got to go and the sun has yet to set what a great way of being able to say you know what i can just control this in camera make it look phenomenal and then, like you said, even just painting a little bit of magenta or something to make it look like the sunset and still get this great shot. So I'm, I'm assuming your flash power was pretty high on these. Then. Is that right? Yeah, this is full power. Yeah, those are those are awesome. Man. And, and I know we've mentioned this before in other conversations, you guys, but I love when there's that contrast of warmth and coolness. So being able to use a CTO gel against a blue sky, it, it just it works every time. Love it. That's definitely one of my go-tos, and that's um, kind of the same idea that I had here. So this is actually past sunset. This is in that blue hour. But same idea. I just used uh, um, that CTO gel on a flash. I think there's, I think the sphere's on this one. So it's just a CTO gel and a sphere, and then just placed inside this van, and they're just going to hang out. Um, this is actually Beaver Lake back here. Nice. So cool. Your, your work is, uh, like I said, I just absolutely love it. I hate to keep saying it. It sounds insincere when I say it so many times, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I, got, I got a man crush on your work. <laughs> um, and so th this one is pretty simple. It's just, simple. Um, just a grid. And I didn't have a stand. And so there's actually off here to camera right, there's actually just a wall that I have the, um, the flash laying on. And it's just gridded for them. And then this is actually it in November, but they had already started putting up Christmas lights down on the Fayetteville Square. And so I'm just shooting through these Christmas lights right here to kind of get this, this front bokeh. And those Christmas lights, they must've been pretty close to your lens. Is that right? I mean, you, you had it within. They're basically touching my lens right here. Yeah. Nice. Um, nice. And this is one of my, uh, my favorite shots from 2015, I believe. Um, it, this, it was also, it just as a heads up, it was also one of our most liked images in the Magmod community for, I think for the entire <laughs> year. It was right up there in the, like the top five, so. Awesome, that's cool. Um, I didn't know that. 
Um, but basically, this is just out on the dance floor um, and the bride's just dancing, twirling her dress. We'd actually, um, during some of the formal shots, we were doing some stuff in the street and I had told her to kind of twirl her dress and stuff. And so I think she was just kind of, I think she just hooked on to doing that. So when she was out on the dance floor, she was just twirling her dress around. And this is just um, one flash in my hand, handheld with a grid on it, um, just way up over her head, as, as just as holding it up over my head as far as I can. And um, I, I have an article exactly how I edited the shot on F-stoppers, but there's details in the background and um, some of these colors are a little bit more exaggerated in post, but um, I kind of walked through how to do that if you want to look it up. Yeah, I know. I, and that actually you, it brings up a good point, Jason, because I think one of the things that, that's worth mention, mentioning is that um, not only are you doing this now and kind of sharing a lot of great tips with all of us, but but Jason, for those who don't know you guys, or maybe you, you recognize the name, but you're not sure why, Jason does a lot of articles for F-stoppers. And so he's constantly sharing you know, good tips, reviews on things that he uses, um, different lights that he uses, so forth. Uh, so definitely make sure to go check out F-stoppers and just search for his name, Jason Vincent. And you're going to find a lot of great stuff. But yeah, I, I did. I remember I saw this uh, this photo on F Stoppers when you did the article about it, and I loved how you were so. I mean, you literally just put yourself out there, very vulnerable, saying, "Hey, here's the original shot. Here's how I did the edit." I mean, you're. You, <laughs> it was great. It was a disaster to start off with. I think it was like two stops overexposed. It was a definite like, oh, she's doing something cool. Let me do a grab shot. And it was overexposed and wasn't framed very pop properly, but I was able to pull it down. Thankfully, none of the highlights were too blown that I wasn't able to save it. So it worked out. Really it. Well. <laughs> and, and Jason, for those who aren't familiar, why why would you have chose to use the mag grid for a situation like this? I mean, you're holding it overhead, but why why did you use the mag grid? What was your like thinking? What was going through your mind at the time? I just whenever I'm shooting receptions, I always have the grid on for the most part. Um, every once in a while, I'll have the sphere with a grid, but I just I always want to really have my light dialed in. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to protect the ambience of the reception, and so I don't want my light to spill everywhere. So I just want it to be really controlled. So I usually have my reception areas dialed in to be about one to two stops underexposed, and then I use my light with a grid to kind of just fill in, but I only want it to fill in a specific spot. Yeah. So do you find yourself at receptions doing that a lot, where you're just hand holding it with a grid? Yeah. If um, unless it's some of the like the traditional stuff, so like the first dance, um, father daughter dance, things like that. I'll have my light on a stand because I know where they're going to be. Um, but if I'm wandering around, then I just I have the light in my hand and I just kind of wander around and I grab stuff. That way I don't have to carry around a stand. I mean, it'd be nice to have an assistant that can kind of do that so I can get a little bit more um, variation in my light placement. But for the most part, just carrying it around works for me. You know, I found that after the major dances, when it just gets into the, the crazy, fun party type atmosphere, a lot of times I'll even have my second shooter just go and pack up their camera and actually just help me with the light. I, I Only because the way I look at it is there's only so many dancing, crazy, fun photos that we need really anyways. And so I'd rather have my light be perfectly placed um, you know, and exposed properly for every shot. And that way, when I go to editing, it's like I get to that part. And all I have to do is do the calling, but there's like really no editing to do. It's just, you know, I'm done with the photos because everyone's lit, per, you know, perfectly. So um, yeah, that's a great way to have it. Yeah, it's nice. Awesome. A amazing image. And guys, like you said, go check out F Stoppers. Is there, can you remember what the title of the article might have been? Or maybe we can even link to it. Um, I can link to it. If you want to look it up, I think it's um, how I saved one of my most liked images. Cool. Very so, yeah. cool. Awesome. Well, let's uh, keep going. You have so many good ones. Uh, so this is just a gear loadout. This is for um, a website most people are probably familiar with. It's called shotkit.com, and they basically just um, showcase the gear that photographers are using. And so this is kind of an older kit because I'm not using all the, a lot of this stuff now. But um, I wanted to do something a little bit more different, and I wanted to do – I had this idea from actually visiting a museum where they have the – um, the red light, the blue light, and the green light all pointing at the same place, and it kind of creates a white light, but it creates the different colored shadows and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I was going for on this. And I have a behind the scenes, and so um, everything is just on a table. And I have this red, this flash is gelled red, and it's just pointed at the white curtains. This flash is gelled green, and it's just pointed at the white door. And then this flash is um, gelled blue, and it's just pointed at the ceiling but off to the side a little bit. So it's still a little bit more directional instead of filled in. Can you see where I'm, nice. when I'm pointing? 
I love that. So you, you, so you have your RGB basically, and then go back to the, uh, and so now when you look at it, it looks like you have, it almost looks like three different sources of light coming from all different directions, all gel differently, which essentially it is, but you had it all on one stand, just pointed different directions. Right. Um, and then that's and, and, that highlights. Yeah. Those are amazing, man. Have you ever thought about doing that with a bride or, 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 you know, some kind of crazy avant-garde photo? Yeah, definitely. I have some ideas um, with gels. I won't share them um, just yet. Maybe when I actually get the picture, because I have a couple ideas in my head of um, some gels on flashes and stuff. I just haven't ran into the situation just yet where I can actually pull it off. <laughs> nice, man. I love that. You, you, you know what, though? You bring up a great point with regards to when you when you have these ideas, uh, you know, it's like previous pre-visualization it's it's basically knowing and and you know kind of having an idea going into a shoot and saying okay this is what i want to do now i just have to find the right moment for it and so i think we can all learn from that going into our shoots like if like for example if you're new to mag mod maybe it's as simple as okay on this shoot i want to learn how to use my mag grid for light control you know or i want to use how to learn how to use gels and then you just kind of grow and grow and, and now you're at that stage where you're like thinking of this advanced crazy lighting you know ideas and now you just have to find the right moment for it so I got to ask before we go on to the next image, um, tell us what the, the dinosaur is for. <laughs> My personality. <laughs> just, just the child at heart, I guess. That's awesome. No, I love it. I love it. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. Um, this next one's uh, a little interesting because a lot of people actually think it's um, Photoshop. They think it, this is like a um, like a graphic design type element that I've just kind of stacked in on top of this picture. But what it actually is, is this Westcott flex light. Can you see this? Yep. Um, but basically, it's just like a one by one square LED light, and it's completely flexible. And so what I did is I just turned it into a cylinder, and I stuck my lens through the cylinder at the very end. And so you can see all of the individual LEDs. And then from there, I just put a couple up against a background, and I used a, um, a mag sphere just to blow the background white. I love it, man. I, you know, it's funny when I think about shots like this where I'm blowing something out behind them, I, I always call it, or the way I refer to it is my light bomb. So I say, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I got to do a light bomb shot. And basically where I'm just like, just exploding light behind them. Um, this reminds me of like a James Bond scene. You know, I can imagine James Bond's right in the middle there. I got a, I got a lot of comments saying James Bond whenever I posted this. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. So it's a combination of the Westcott Flex light plus the mag sphere behind them. Yep. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Uh, um, this next one's uh, pretty simple. It's uh, a lot of people are doing it nowadays. The the ring of fire where you just um, you have a copper pipe that you put in front of your lens and it kind of um, reflects the light <clears throat> as it, as it's coming in. And so that's how you get this crazy um, light flare. Uh, the thing here is that I'm just shooting into a um, hot shoe flash with a CTO gel on it, and that just makes the light a lot more, a lot harder and a lot more directional. And so that's why the ring is a lot more defined here. And then this is just a, I think he's like a five or six year old boy. This is actually at a a, a family shoot, and they hired us because they like some of our different style of photography. And so it's trying to just get something a little bit more different here, a little um, like profile uh, portrait of their son. That is so cool. I, I love how you took that. You're right, because a lot of people are using that copper pipe and they use it with the sun. And so they basically yeah. will hold it up and they'll have that, that reflection of the sun with the flare. Um, but the fact that you used it with a flash here and it's such a, it's such a cool piece of artwork. I, if, if this was my kid, I would blow this up really big and put it you know, somewhere cool in their room. I just, I, I think, I oh, love it, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot more defined because you're not getting, you're not getting so much ambient light. You're not you're able to bring it all down to black. This is actually in the middle of a parking garage. So the only light here is actually from the flash. So that's why it's so much more defined. Wow. So, so was it, was it a pretty dark scene anyways? I mean, was this towards nighttime, like towards the end of the session? This is just in the middle of the day, but we're in a, we're in a parking garage. So it's, it's shaded and I just shot into the shade. And did you tell the kid to kind of, you know, put his head down? Did you kind of position him just right to, or did, or was he kind of looking straight ahead and, this is just him. I didn't tell the kid to do anything. He's just doing his own thing. And I just, I ran and set my flash up and ran to the other side. Well, I think he was like kicking a stick or something like that. Oh man, dude, my, I mean, my mind it, is blown. It's not, I wasn't telling him to stand there. I just knew he was going to be there for a little bit because of what he was doing. 
And so I just took the opportunity. Yeah, I, I have a feeling right now people's minds are blown already, but but guys, wait, wait for this next shot too. You're <laughs> it's gonna continue. Um so this is uh this is a shot. So this is at a um a reception venue here in here in Fayetteville, and I wanted to get this light painting shot and uh, this is a 10 second exposure and the lights that you see back here are actually me running behind the couple and I have two flashes in my hand, each with a CTB gel. And I'm just pushing the test button over and over and over as I run behind the couple. I, so I, I laugh, dude, because I, I imagine you running back and or running across like hitting flashes and, you know, I, oh, it's incredible. You should have seen uh, the looks on the guest faces when I was because I whenever I do these shots outside I always do like a test shot just to make sure that I have all my settings dialed in and that whatever I want to do is going to work before I bring the couple out so that they're not waiting on me so I'm out here and there's a bunch of people outside smoking and they're seeing me just run around shooting flashes off but there's act there's no couple at this time I'm just acting a fool out in this grass field so I actually had once I got the couple out here and I got the shot I walked up to him and I showed him what I got just so I didn't look like a complete idiot <laughs> that's funny man what uh what did you use to like the couple for that shot <coughs> nothing um, just the, the ambient light so this this is the ambient light this is no flash at all mm -hmm. and so this, and then this with um with the flash nice so you just you just told them to hold really still the whole time then yeah and i mean it's, it's a 10 second exposure and they're not in a super dynamic pose or anything like that so it's pretty easy for them to to stay that still um this one i i was able to just crank up the iso and, and get it without that's why you don't see the um the streak in the clouds or anything like that but that way they, they did they have those options too but you can actually see some of these flashes where i hit the test button and it wasn't fully recycled and that's how you get the variations in the sizes of these these different um light pops it, it looks like little uh what are those those glow bugs or something flying around <laughs> like fireflies Fireflies, yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Or, but it also kind of makes me think of uh, like a Star Wars type image. I, I don't know why, but that's kind of what I think about as well. Is that maybe it's even just their stance of them looking at each other the way they are. I don't know, but uh, yeah, really cool shot. And I love that. Can you see that uh, the one that just regular ambient as well? Yep, nice. there it is. There it is. Um, and nice there's a, there's a big, uh, like a big street light that's out. Uh, that's behind me by like 15 or so feet. And so that's that's probably what's giving most of the light on them, even though it looks fairly, fairly flat because the, the moon's behind him. So the moon's lighting up everything um, landscape wise pretty well. So cool. We'll keep going. You you, uh, you have so many great stuff. Let's, yeah, let's just keep talking about it. Um, this one is just me trying to recreate uh, sunlight. So this is just a, a max sphere with a CTO gel on it. And I use the sphere here because I wanted to get um, the light to be um, to be spread across all of this shrubbery here on both sides. And they're just um, tucked in between these two trees and I'm shooting through a bush here. So they kind of look kind of secluded and um, I'm able to get the, the blue sky a little bit from that, from the blue hour, because this is after sunset. So that's then, one flash, is that right? This is, yeah, this is one flash. And so you're getting, um, the lights reflecting off of her face and filling in so that you get to see this kind of light, the light on his cheek here. Awesome. That's so nice, man. Uh, let's see here. Um, so this next set um, is something that I don't do too often, but I think it's pretty fun to do when when you have uh, uh, the getting the getting ready part of the day is going to take a long time and you have a lot of time to spend. So. <coughs> This is just one one flash placed outside with a CTO gel and it's firing through um, some wood slated um, blinds. And so that's how you get this, this pattern from the blinds and you get this hard light coming in on the, the makeup artist um, doing her makeup here. And just a close up shot. So same thing, you get this pattern from the blinds and then just this kiss of light on the bride here. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I have another flash set up inside, and so this is an example of it. Um, you can't see it here, but I ended up putting a grid on this flash. And so this flash is on a separate channel. And so when I'm 
want to, I can change my channel and get a completely different look by using the flash inside and turning the flash that's outside off. And so that's how I'm getting this look. That flash is pointed directly at the wall using your light bomb and blowing the wall to go white. But I put a grid on it because it stops it from reflecting off of the ceiling so much. And then that's mm -hmm. how I get a little bit more directional on the bride's face. And so same thing with this image. It's just, um, so just back and forth, I would just be like, okay, I wanna get a close shot. So I'd flip to channel two and I'd use that flash. And then when I'd want to get a wide shot with the light coming through the window, I'd flip to channel one, I'd grab my light stand and just move it out of the way. And I could get something like this. So just two diff completely different looks. And all I have to do is change the channel of my flash. And, and, I mean, it's phenomenal the way you did that. And and what's cool though, I've seen actually people, if they don't have shutters in the windows like that, I've actually seen people now start to do um, with the mag beam where they're doing the wide angle. And they'll actually put the mask in there with the, it almost looks like the diagonal slots and, and create kind of this shutter look or this unique lighting as well, which is neat. But I love how you were able to switch between creating one look to another look with just a matter of, you know, shifting one flash to a different. That picture right there is phenomenal. What lens did you use there, Jason? Do you remember? Is that a macro? Uh, yeah, this is the uh, 105 millimeter macro for Nikon. Nice. And, Very cool. Yeah, f5.6. Very cool. Um, let's see. So now we're moving into, now that you brought it up, uh, the mag beam. And so uh, the very first time that I got the mag beam, I just had it in my living room and I was just kind of testing it out and to see how, how it worked. And I had the wide lens in it and I was taking a picture of the flash and I noticed it created this interesting flare. And so it's funny, the very first time I used the mag beam on a, on a couple is this shot right here and it's not even for what its intended use is. <laughs> but I'm using it. Yeah, no, you you definitely thought outside the box here. I I love the result though because I will I'll let I'll let you show people. I I just love this result. So yeah, so this is um, this image right here is directly at a camera, and then after after post, I just brought up the the exposure a little bit, and I, I cloned out some distracting highlights that were out here off to the side. But this is the resulting. I just really love this lens flare, and it's not really something that you can get. I mean. Even when you shoot at lower apertures like f16, um, and I think even this this is at f10, um, you don't quite get those that starburst effect like you do um, when using this wide lens on the Mac beam. And so, you said this was your Sigma 35 as well? Uh, no, this is um, the 85. This is the Sigma oh, the 85. 85. Okay, it's it's cool to think that you can have that 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 cool looking flare in your bag to pull out wherever you are, whenever you need it, you know? Right, even, even when the sun's not there. Yeah, that awesome. is cool. I remember when you posted that image too, and people were pretty stoked about it. In fact, I think I think you put that image in the F-Stoppers article. Was it about the mag beam? Is that where you put it in there? Uh, yeah, this, this one was definitely in the article where I reviewed the mag beam. Yeah, I think I remember yeah. seeing that as well. Yeah, I think Very actually cool. these, these next two images might have been in the article as well too, but so, this one, this is um, the same couple, but this is with the mag beam uh, fully extended. And I love the mag beam fully extended because it gives you so much more power out of your light or not power or whatever. I, um, I, yeah, it basically collimates it or concentrates that light. I totally get what you're saying. It's that whole semantics thing. It's like it, you, you obviously don't take it from 50 watt to 200 watt, but by collimating it, not letting that light spill, you're, you're, you're putting it all in one area, concentrating it. I, I get you. So it's just it's just a, it's just magnifying this light here, and it acts as a grid. So the grid's one of my favorite modifiers. So being able to use the mag beam as a grid while getting more power out of my light is um, just phenomenal to be able to use. And so this is actually pushing my cameras my cameras uh, high speed sync to the limit. So this is 85 millimeter f 1.4 at uh, one four thousandth of a second. So that's the highest shutter speed that my D750 can go. And I'm wow. still getting power out of my flash here. And then the reflection here, um, I can't remember what I used. I probably used my cell phone. Um, and th this is just reflecting some of the sky that's above them. So was this shot during the daytime? Yeah, this is, I think this is at, I think this is like at 12 in the afternoon. Oh, dude, that's so cool. <clears throat> and so this is just them tucked back in the shade. So they're in a nice dark area. And then I'm able to underexpose enough just so I can get that blue sky. Love it. Yeah. 
Um, and so, yeah, just to give an example, so this is actually shot probably an hour to two hours before this picture. And so you can see where the sun is two hours later in the day. So the sun was pretty a decent amount higher here because these two shot, these were shot the same day. So that's, the, again, that's the same is, girl then right there. No, this, this is a different girl. Oh, this okay. Is, uh, just shot the same day. Okay. Um, and so this is the same thing. This is the mag, um, the mag beam fully extended and just lighting up her from camera left while also getting lit from camera right by the sun. And this is uh, one 2,500th of a second, but this is at 35 millimeter 1.4. And so I'm able to get the flash farther away from my subject while still maintaining, being able to get enough power to underexpose the sun here. I feel like this image is so commercial. Like, like I could see this on a on a cover of, you know, like a bridal shot or or a bridal magazine or it just it's one of those very commercial. Like, I, if, if you know, every bride getting married would love a shot like this where they're just kind of having fun with their dress and and lit perfectly. I love that. Yeah, yeah this is definitely one of my favorites from um, from last year, or just one of my favorite shots of with the mag beam, definitely. Well, what a cool way to use the mag beam to put light on her and and be able to basically darken down, you know, so that the sky is not just pure white, for example. Um, yeah, great balance. Love it. Um, so we'll just keep chucking along here. Um, <clears throat> so this is outside Albuquerque, New Mexico um, in the desert. And so we had a nice set of clouds roll in, and so I knew I wanted to underexpose the clouds here. And so I put the um, my flash here, and this is just the mag sphere. And I had to get it fairly close because this is still full power here. So in order to get them lit enough, I had to get it fairly close so I couldn't keep it out of the frame. And so what I did is just later on, I just took that out of out of post. And so this is just this is direct this is directly out of camera, and this is after post. Nice. Very nice. And it looks like the one next to you or the one next to it actually shows where you were positioned, right? Yeah. And so this is behind the scene. You can, this is kind of a, a cliff and this kind of just keeps going down. And I'm actually, this is where I'm standing in this picture, but I think for the, the image we just looked at, I actually jumped down here just to get a little bit further away, I think. Yeah. So rad. I, and I love how photographers are always willing to just put themselves anywhere I, I like how you're like you're like yeah the, the cliff just keeps going down but I went ahead and jumped right over here to the edge well it's funny because I actually kept jumping down because I was like oh it's not too far to jump down so I jumped from here down to here and then from here down to here and I didn't actually think about how I was going to get back up and so I ended up having to like walk along this ridge all the way down for a decent amount just so I can find my way back up <laughs> oh man oh dear but it was worth it that's that would be uh, quite scary. See, I it was funny when I was young. Like I would take all kinds of risks and jump everywhere, jump off cliffs into the water, things like that. And nowadays, now that I have all my kids, I'm like, I'm I'm one of those old ladies who freaks out every you know all the time. I, I think of old lady. I think of my grandma. I guess is who I'm referring to. But it's funny. So. Very uh, cool. And then is there two more images there? Oh, it's a behind the scenes and a another one. So this is a. Uh... Same same shoot where just on the way out and I just I was really digging these clouds so I wanted to use it again and basically the same situation but I have them placed on top of a hill now and so I couldn't get the light tall enough because I'm just using these little uh, Manfrotto nano stands they don't go very tall I think their max height on them is six feet or seven feet or something like that and so I just had my my buddy that was pulled the light stand up over his head as tall as he could and he was able to get it just high enough and then I was able to just uh, take it out and post. So cool. That's one of the things I love about Magmod and, and when I started using them a lot at weddings was exactly for that. Like being able to take it out and post is so easy when it's just basically a stick, you know, a light stand. Whereas right. as, if you have like a big umbrella or something and it, you know, and it gets in the way and it makes it real obvious. Um, in fact, a lot of the things that I would take out in post, I was just doing it right inside of Lightroom with the, with the spot removal tool. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was, it was that simple. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what I do. Cool. That's what I do most of the time. Uh, this one I ended up using Photoshop because I knew I was going to take it out just because of where he was at. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, 
I actually had him step out and I took a blank frame. And so that's how this doesn't actually have that highlight there. You can see because the sphere actually gets light all the way over here. Gotcha. But because, I, but because I took that blank frame, I was able to put it in without it, without the light on there. Very nice. I love it. Awesome, awesome. Well, Jason, hey, let's go ahead and uh, stop sharing your screen for just a second. Come on back and and uh, I want to. Uh, We'll wrap things up. I I I, t I promised everyone their minds would be blown in the beginning, and I'm sure they're probably looking at it going, "Man, like I, I learned so much." So I think I think what's so great about your your work, Jason, and the images that we've seen, just kind of the different array there, is that you you use so many different modifiers. Is there one particular that is kind of your go-to, your favorite? Um, you know, like on a wedding day, for example. Um, I pretty much always have a grid on on my light. Um, but the, I go back and forth about 50-50 between the grid and the sphere. Yeah. A lot, but a lot of the time, actually, if I'm using the sphere, I have the grid on it as well. So nice. And then, and then I saw that you had it, uh, the gels on quite a few photos. Do you find yourself using the gels a lot, or I use gels a lot, yeah, especially yeah. the CTO gel, just because, like you were saying before, I like that contrast between the the orange light and the blue light and stuff like that. And so, a lot of the times, I'll gel it. I'll gel it orange. So I can get the sky. I've been playing around with gelling it blue and using blue light on um, on the subjects with like the tungsten lighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's a little bit harder to pull off because then you have those blue skin tones. So it, it is. Well, you know what I found on that is um, in the camera, I can push my camera, Kelvin, to about 10,000, uh, 10,000 Kelvin. But I actually found that when I use a blue light and I want to change that sky to be, you know, like apocalyptic orange, for example, um, that I, I have to bring it into Lightroom and actually take my Kelvin temperature to like 35, 40,000 Kelvin, um, just to basically, like you said, get rid of some of that blue tone from the skin. Yeah. And then occasionally I'll even go in and I'll desaturate blues if I, if I do have any highlights on their skin tones. But, um, but I, it, it's, it's cool when you pull it off. I've actually done it in camera. And even, even if there's a little bit of blueness on their skin tones, even though if it's not perfectly white per se, um, I'll actually even show the clients and they're like, they look back and they're like, you made the sky look like that. Like it's, it's kind of fun to do. So um, <laughs> anyhow, well, Jason, I, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to share these photos with us. And you, I mean, you, you shared so many, not only cool images, but you just gave so much knowledge to all of us and inspired us in so many ways. So I sincerely yeah, appreciate so, uh, you doing that. Educational. Hopefully some people got some stuff out of it. And uh, I mean, I'm always open to questions. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm always willing to, to share my knowledge. So you're awesome, man. And again, guys, go check Jason's articles out on F-Stoppers. And then tell us one more time where we can find your website and Facebook and Instagram, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so just um, vincentimages.com and then vincentimages underscore Jason, uh, my wife at Vincent Images. And then uh, it's just Vincent Images on Facebook as well. And feel free to send me a friend request or whatever. And Yeah. Awesome. And Jason, tell us where you're based out of. Uh, based out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. So it's Northwest Arkansas. Um, most people know because it it's home of the Razorback football team. Nice, nice. But of course, you you travel all over to do weddings and stuff. Is that right? Uh, yeah, <coughs> we do a fair amount. Um, uh, just throughout the United States and a couple destination weddings a year at least. Um, I actually fly out to India on Saturday, and then from India I fly straight to Maine to shoot a wedding. Wait, did did you say to India? Yep. Nice. Are you doing a wedding over there? Uh, no, I'm going up uh, for some stuff through F-Stoppers and then also to shoot the um, the Holy Festival. It's like the the Festival of Colors where they throw the powder paint and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. so it should be pretty fun. You don't, you don't need a friend to go with you? <laughs> that sounds amazing, man. That would be a lot of fun. Well, I look forward to seeing those images. That will be cool. Yeah, definitely. So, well, hey, Jason, thank you so much, man. Thanks for joining us and doing this uh, conversation. Really appreciate it. Like I said, I know I learned a lot, and, and I, I know everyone tuning in has learned a ton as well. So uh, awesome. thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, Jason, take care. Have a good day, man. Yeah, you too. All right, bye-bye.